it's not going to happen soon. It's going to take several years of research before one could consider doing germline editing. But one can see a logical way forward to getting there. One can no longer dismiss it as just not possible. It won't be a large number of patients, but uh, we think it should proceed with caution down the road, not now, but when that becomes feasible, it should be proceeding with caution, but caution doesn't mean prohibition. We've concluded there are some cases that are really compelling where people don't have good alternatives and yet want to have children that are genetically related but are healthy. So we're not talking about designer babies, we're talking about healthy babies. And we outlined a very narrow set of compelling circumstances that might justify this in the future if the science progresses so that it becomes safe and if we develop a regulatory system capable of making sure it's used only for those purposes and not for anything unwarranted or untoward. This is an opportunity. We're proceeding slowly now with somatic editing perhaps slowly in the future with germline editing, we should be thinking now about why we would proceed with this, what we would ban. And that requires public input. Well, I think we all share pretty much the same genome. I think that goes beyond, I think, national boundaries. I think the future of humanity in this particular case is probably more acute felt uh, within our community, maybe you know, in a larger scientific community. I think it is relevant uh, in this particular case that we should uh, all humanity come together to consider this very important issue.